Welcome to the Finding the Magic podcast, where books come alive. I'm Tricia Copeland, a fiction author and host of this show. If you love books, finding great reads, and hearing about the story behind the story directly from the authors, this is the place for you. Whether you like fantasy, science fiction, dystopian, or romance titles, I think you'll find something to love in my playlist. Listen in to discover something magical about a book or two today. Hi, Mariah. Hi. I'm excited to have you here today. We have Mariah Chavis with us on Finding the Magic podcast. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. Do you want to just jump in? Where do you want to start? Tell me about your most recent book, maybe? Um, so right now, my most recent book that's out is Heart of the Sea. It's um, was my it's my debut, and so it came out in August of this past year, and it is a young adult pirate fantasy. Ooh, fun. Well, start. Just tell us what the book's about, the characters, and how this whole fun fascination started. <laughs> So it's uh, my main character, Narissa. Her sister has been taken um, by this like insidious darkness that's trying to take over all the kingdoms. And she has to steal the fastest ship in all of the within all these kingdoms in order to get to where she's going. Um, but the problem is the guy who's been who captains that ship, um, not only is he being controlled by a malicious queen, but he's been ordered to kill her in exchange for his freedom. Oh, yeah, that puts a kink in things a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it does. And this, is this a YA book? It is, yes. Okay, fun. What age range? Is this upper YA? Or? Um, I've had readers as young as 12 read it and enjoy it, um, but then I've had adults enjoy it too. But it is appropriate for like younger YA readers. So that was that was my goal when I wrote it. I wanted it to be so like, because I started reading YA when I was like 12 years old. And so I wanted kids that were my age when I started reading YA to be able to read my books too. And what age is the character? Um, it's told in dual POV. So my, my female main character is 17 and then my male main character is 19. Okay. So he does get a voice. He does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Yeah. I love books like that because you kind of get that back and forth of mm -hmm. knowing exactly what the person is experiencing or going through. Yeah. I love, I, I love dual POV. Um, I write in it a good bit. Um, not necessarily always like the male character and then the female character, but like I have a um, novella coming out with a collection of other like novellas, like a Snow White inspired one, and it's told in dual POV, um, but it's two females. It's like on the opposite sides of this fantasy world. So one girl who's trying to get to this other place and the girl who's in that place is telling her side too. So. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I always like writing first person because you get such a like intimate perspective of their thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with the idea for a pirate theme? Well, it was it was during COVID. My boyfriend or my husband, my boyfriend at the time, and I were watching all these like movies. Like we watched all of Marvel, we watched all of Harry Potter. I don't remember if we watched all of Twilight. I feel like we probably did. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but, but one of them that we watched was all of Pirates of the Caribbean and I was like it would be really fun to write like a pirate book but then have just like more magic like there's some magic in Pirates of the Caribbean um, but this was just like more elemental magic having to do with like the ocean and um, and also like familiar 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 can't say the word <laughs> to magic because uh, my male main character Cyrus he has the ability to like talk to crows and so they follow him across the ocean and then my female main character, Narissa, has a power over the sea. Okay. And how does your magic world work? Um, so there are like limit there are limitations. So Narissa hasn't really been trained in her magic. So she's kind of more fearful of it throughout the beginning of the book, especially. Um, and then Cyrus has had to use his magic as like a crutch. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of, you know, trying to figure out which part of them is magic, like how to separate the, the who they are from their magic, but also being able to use it to their advantage. Um, so there's a lot of elemental magic, but then there is also a lot of animal magic. So that's those are the main two types of magic in it. That's fun. And is the setting a little bit medieval then? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's fictitious. It's based off of like a lot of European 
um, landmarks and stuff, but also it's a, most of it takes place on the ocean. So yeah. I created different oceans. Like, so there's this one part of the book where they cross from one ocean to the next. And I talk about how like the water like melds together because if you've ever seen like Pacific and the Atlantic, they don't actually, t they won't actually blend with each other. And so stuff like that. So it is a lot of, takes place a lot of on the sea, but they do have these like places that they have to go. So they stop there every now and then, but a lot of it is on a boat. <laughs> Fun. And did you do a lot of research about pirates and boats and sailing? Um, yes, I actually don't even like the ocean. I'm very scared <laughs> of the ocean. So um, I think that was that was fun to kind of think about because I think my, my main character, she has power over it, but then she's also terrified of it. And so I think I was I was able to like tap into that. And then I did some research on like the Bahamas because um, during the time of like Pirates of the Caribbean, kind of based on that. Um, how the trade would work between the European settlers in the Baham, but like near Nassau and like um, down in that area. Um, research on that. It was started out. I was like, I might, I was gonna do like historical fantasy, but then I, I wanted to create my own map, so I ended up just creating a whole new world for it. So neat. That's fun. And is this the first in a series, or is it a standalone? It is a standalone, so it can be read by itself, and then they get to where they're going. They do the thing and it ends either happy or it doesn't. <laughs> so <laughs> I was gonna say I won't ask you whether they defeat yeah. this evil mat is evil magic. <laughs> um and does she have some supporting characters too? Yeah, I like writing supporting characters. I actually when I first started writing it, I had a lot of supporting characters and I had to cut like half of them out because there was just so many people. <laughs> um so there is her first mate. And he, and her, um, Narissa's first mate, um, and then Cyrus has a cousin. Narissa also has a cousin on board, and then there's another um, sailor that comes with Cyrus. And so I think there's like four of side characters. And then Cyrus has a crow that he that's like the main crow that he like communicates with and communicates with the other crows through. And his name is Besmic. Oh, fun! And I'm assuming she convinces him to use the ship right yes she does so there's this map that they have and in order for the map to work two people have to agree that they're going to the same place and it'll it'll slowly like reveal to them the steps that they have to take in order to get to where they're going um so if they don't work together then they can't see the map and so they have to end up working together fine and does he have some goal in all of this or does he just kind of get swept along for the story <laughs> so his goal has that like been so he was kidnapped when he was like a kid and so his goal is he wants his freedom but based on these parameters that this queen who's controlling him is given he's got to get her to this place um, because the, the queen wants to get Narissa to this place and so he's kind of just got to follow along and hope that they don't die in the process because <laughs> they, they make some interesting decisions <laughs> oh that's fun so tell me, what is the name of the book? Um, Heart of the Sea. Heart of the, you said that in the beginning. And I okay. <laughs> that is super fun. And it sounds like you have another book coming out, a novella. Um, that one, yeah. So that one is part of a collection that comes out, I think, in 2025. Um, and it's based off Snow White, um, but also kind of like a dash of like Russian mythology and stuff. Um, so it's about this. A uh, girl who her cousin is set to marry the next czar, but at the their engagement dinner, she takes a bite of um, what we find out is apple pie. And apples have not been in like the regular world um, for centuries. And it ends up putting her into like this deep sleep. So now her cousin is going to travel to the bear kingdom and rest and get an apple to cure her. Um, and so, yeah, that, it was a lot of fun to write. It was interesting to write, have, having to ex like explore the magic of it create the magic of it and then make sure I wasn't contradicting myself <laughs> and so well and did you do a lot of research of Russian mythology too uh, I based it more of um their ideas on like they hold bears like really sacred I think I was I'm a teacher too and so I was talking with my kids one time one year about um New Year's traditions and there's like one New Year's tradition in Russia where they like dance around and like dress as bears or something uh, and I was like, that's interesting. And I was doing some more research on like bears in Russia. And I was, I, I found it really interesting, like the species of bears that live up there, like whether or not they can kill them and all that stuff. Like, it's just, it fascinated me. So that is really neat. And how did you start writing? Did you just decide one day, okay, I'm going to write this whole novel? <laughs> 
Oh, it's hard to see is actually the seventh novel length thing that I wrote, it's, but it was oh. the first thing that I that I got published. Um, I was a, my mom got handed me Twilight and that got me into reading back in middle school. And I was like, well, I kind of want to write my own story. So I just started writing stories from there. Um, most of them were not good. And so, but I, I like to tell people, I was like, even though I have all these stories like that I've shelved, I feel like every single manuscript has taught me something new and it's made me a better writer. Um, and then I have this, I have a book that I'm querying right now and I feel like it's so strong. And I think if I had written it, you know, like 10 years ago, it would not nearly have been as strong as it is now. Um, and it wouldn't have been as good because I, I, if I had just, you know, skipped all these other ones that I had written and shelved. Um, so yeah. Oh, very fun. Well, and you're a teacher, so obviously you have a little bit of background. <laughs> yeah. So I guess what's next is this new novel. Can you tell us anything about the novel you're querying? Um, it's a, it's, well, I like to, I used to say it was like based off one fairy tale, but the more I talk about it and I'll tell people about it, they're like, it's kind of like just a mixture of all these fairy tales. So I feel like it is like an ode to people who love fairy tales because it has a lot of fairy tale-esque things in it. Um, it's major inspiration, which funny enough was before I wrote the novella for um, the Snow White anthology, was Snow White. And so it's based really off the relationship between Snow White and the queen. Um, and also the the huntsman that is, you know, given the task of giving of taking her heart. And so I, I put a little twist on it. And I was like, I, I wanted to think of a way to make it so that it was more about, it was less about Snow White's beauty and more about the queen having a really good reason for why she didn't like her. And so that reason kind of drove the whole novel. Oh, interesting. So you're writing about the antagonist and her backstory a little bit, right? So she does have a POV. So like it's uh, it's three points of view, but not kind of. So it's the princess, her guard, and then the queen has, she's telling us the past of how this all came to be. And so she's telling us how, you know, it came so that she ended up with a stepdaughter and how she ends up cursed and all these things. The queen ends up cursed or her stepdaughter does? Kind of both. Okay. Um, because the curse ends up being... Well, this, you kind of find out this at the beginning. So the curse ends up being that um, she will kill all seven of her brothers and claim the crown for herself. I know. And so I was like, that's a really good reason to not like your stepdaughter. So Right. There you go. <laughs> oh, well, she, so she has to kill them and become the queen or. So, yeah. So like in the world, um, any daughter born to the crown automatically gets the crown, no matter if she's the firstborn or the seventh born or whatever. So it's the, you know, basing, uh, it's, it's very much so of like, what kind of tension would that bring, especially if she wasn't actually the queen's daughter um, and all these things like that. And what would they do with her when they realized she was cursed? Right. So if she's not queen, she has to kill her brothers is what it is, uh, right? Yeah. Okay. So she wants to be queen. She can't be queen if her daughter, if her stepdaughter becomes queen, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that, yeah. So it, it seems like it would be hard to make an evil character and somebody, but also evil for a reason. That's <laughs> a very interesting, you know. Are I they like giving, I like, and it probably sounds very convoluted because I'm, I'm obviously not explaining everything um, about well, it. You don't want to give it away, right? I don't want to give it away. I know. But like, I, when I create villains, I want to give them a good reason for why they're a villain and what kind of drives them to be a villain because you know no one just wakes up and they're like I'm gonna destroy the world you know they all have a reason for wanting to destroy the world or wanting to take over the world and so I think it's really fun to explore why people become you know why people choose this path and if they had gone a different way like you know there's always like you know the choice the fork in the road and so I like being able to see the choices they could have made to lead them this way versus that way. For you what do you see as next part of your author journey? Um, I am, I'm working, I'm always working on a million things. I'm also working on um, a book that comes out in 2025 that's based off a short story that I wrote for another small press um, called Ghost at Midnight, the short story was. And so it's a story about this during Jack the Ripper, Victorian era. This girl is going at a, at a ball and all of a sudden the clock strikes midnight and she's the only one not frozen in time. And this ghost appears before her demanding that she find her her killer before he kills again. And so that, that was just like the short story, but um, I pitched it to the publishing, the small press that I had published it with. And I was like, 
what if I made this into like a bunch of short, like a bunch of novellas and they're like, great. And then they read the novellas and they're like, we love them, but we think they need to be books. I was like, great. So I'll just do that. So right now I'm just working on the first one. There may or may not be more, but right now it's just the first one. So I'm like rewriting it, redrafting it, um, which was the first time that I've really done an extensive outline. So I feel like every story that I write, I learn a different way to write, which is good because it, it teaches me all these different ways I can do it. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I've never written a really extensive outline. I, I have like the ending and a few plot points in mind and then I go from there. So. Yeah, that's usually that's usually how I do it. And um, but this one, I have like this really long outline. Like I talked through it with a bunch of people. And because it's a mystery, I had to make sure that all the beats were in the right place, that all the red herrings are in the right place, that all the clues are in the right place. And so it's it's definitely a more like rigid way of writing and it's new for me. And so it's taken me longer than I thought it would. Um, but it has been a good like experiment and exercise on writing. And I feel like if I were to do it in the future, like to outline something more extensively, especially if it wasn't a mystery, because mysteries are hard to write. <laughs> like they're fun to read, but they are really hard to write, which I learned the uh, hard way, I guess. Um, I feel like I could do it faster. And I also commend anybody who's a really extensive outliner and then can just sit down and, and write something in like a week. Like, I don't know how they do it, but yeah. <laughs> no, I can't do that at all. Like for me, the fun part of writing is figuring out how to get to the next place or like how the characters get to the next place or how the plot or how the story moves to the next place. And I get bored if I already know, like if yeah. I already know what's exactly what's happening, I get bored with the writing and I don't want to do it anymore. So, um, but that's, yeah, for mysteries, you definitely have to plot out like what seeds are you planting and, you know, how are you making the reader believe go down the wrong path and think it's someone else? And how are you, you know, making all the clues line up? So the ending makes sense throughout the story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then with this one too, I'm having to teach myself like things just can't happen. Like she has to make sure that she is the driving force. And so it's a lot harder than, than I had thought. Cause I was like, well, if I know what happens and it's really easy to just write the scene as if the scene is just happening to the character. But um, I had to like put myself in the mindset of you no, know, the character's going into the situation. She's the one who's making the scene happen. And so, like I said, it's been a good exercise in writing a different way. Um, I don't know if it's my, I don't know if I prefer it. I do, I do like this, this discovery route. The discovery route is part of the fun. Um, and so it's, it's just different, but I do know the ending. I've already written the ending. <laughs> so that's nice too. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. I, um, challenge, I was always a first person writer like you and I challenged myself and I did like a third person with my last romance that I wrote. And that mm -hmm. was, so I like those little stretches too, that like kind of challenge you as a writer and help your writing grow and I think probably that mystery writing will help your other writing too is learning how to put those little things in you know in the it's sprinkled throughout the story that kind of add the written richness to the book yeah and I think I think it's also fun to reread mysteries when and I'm rereading oh, yeah. them right now as I'm writing it because um, I don't know if you've read the Robert Galbraith books, J.K. Rowling's pseudonym, where she writes her adult crime fiction. Series. Oh, I haven't read those. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of them. They're very, very good. It um, if you by reading them, you really learn just how good of a writing J.K. Rowling really is. Because I read them one time, and there's actually a show too. But I read them one time, and this is my second time like reading them since watching the show and everything. And I am, I texted my friend who got me into the books and I was like, you just really like, it's just really cool to see how she sets it all up um, because you, you don't see it the first time around at all. But then when you're reading it the second time, you're like, she told us from like the get go, <laughs> like, that's the guy, <laughs> like he's the one who did it. And it's just, it's it. And it really speaks of like human nature too, because JK Rowling especially is so good about writing characters that feel very real. And like, that's something that I really strive to do. And so that's why I like listening to her books, her adult fiction specifically, because um, there's a really slow burn romance. Like it's like seven books in, they still haven't kissed or anything. <laughs> and um, I know it's driving me crazy. Um, and I, just being able to like create characters that are so fully fleshed out and real. I'm like, that is just something that's not just reading these books for enjoyment, but reading them as like a learning tool, like how you set up a character, like these little things that he or she will do along the way to show like their true personality, but the, not the mask that they're showing everybody else. And it's just, it's a lot of fun too. 
That's neat. Yeah, I I will have to read those because it does sound like they, they have a lot of teaching in there. They're very honest books. Like the friend that got me into them, I was telling her the other day, I was like, I think JK Rowling is probably the only person who could write this book and get away with it because she's just like, she's just so honest about like human nature. And like um, the second book in the series is about this writer who's murdered. And she like is so unkind to like the literary world in like the UK, like the, how it's made up and like the the hierarchy of it. And I'm just like, I feel like she's the only person who could write this book and get away with like telling the, <laughs> telling the ins and outs of all these things. And it's just really interesting because I, I feel like the books are so honest, um, but then they're also mysteries. And so there's like, there's hidden things throughout the, throughout the, the books. It's, it's just really, it's really good. <laughs> Neat. So do you have other authors who inspire you? And I know you said, you know, Twilight kind of like yeah. spurred you into things. I know. I think Twilight is a good lesson on how to write something that's easily digestible and can get so many people like addicted to it because that's the thing about Twilight is it had this hook. It had a hook that really had people reading it and wanting to see the movies and I think it's so hard to find a hook, especially in today's like literary world. It's so hard to find a book that has a really good hook. Um, and so it's just, I like to read book. I like to read books that are popular, books that aren't popular, books that are like on the literary side of things, books that are more of just, um, you know, popular. And because I was reading this one the other day, because someone had recommended it on one of those pages and it was like, dungeons and drama and it was basically like a book for people who love dungeons and dragons uh, and it's like a cute why quirky romance and I was like it's such it was such an easy book to get into it was such an easy book to read but you could tell that the author had put like such thought into creating the world even though it's more of a contemporary world instead of a fantasy world um, you know and just seeing like how you build that um, so yeah, you know, those books, I just love character development. And so reading books that have really good character development is always fun for me. Neat. Well, do you have, and so you've written a couple of fairy tale kind of renderings. Do you have an overarching theme? I mean, you've written, a, your mysteries are a little bit different from your YA, yeah. but do you have any themes that you try to bring out in the different books? I love writing books that even if the I think with fairy tales, especially, everybody's always hoping for a happily ever after. Um, but I don't think all fairy tales should end with like the couple getting together, but I think that they should end with like hope. Um, and so that's my, no, in any story that I write, that's always like what I want to give readers is that even if the couple doesn't end together, there is kind of hope for something else, maybe hope for healing in some form or fashion. Um, the one that I'm querying does a lot with, um, invisible diseases, but also like how, you know, these diseases that, you know, like um, autoimmune diseases and how that would affect someone's mentality, how it would affect their mental health um, and the people around them, how they would help it to or help or hinder. And so I think it's, I always want to give people hope at the end, even if it's just hope for healing, hope for um, reconciliation with maybe someone else or something like that. But yeah. Does the queen reconcile with her stepdaughter or we don't get to know that? I think that would spoil everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, this sounds super fun. Tell us where we can find you. Um, I'm on Instagram mostly. I am taking an Instagram break right now, but I am on there every now and then. I'll download the app, do post something and then delete it again. <laughs> but I I've, I'm taking a break right now just to get some writing things done. But I'm on Instagram mostly. Um, I do cross post those things on my Facebook page and I have a I have a newsletter too. Okay. And it's under Mariah Chavison. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And do you have a website as well? I do. If you search Mariah Chavis, um, it's, it's a link to my Instagram. So if you go to my Instagram, it's in my bio. But if you also search Mariah Chavis website, it should pop up. Fine. And what platform are your books on? Um, they're on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. The audiobook for Heart of the Sea should be coming out hopefully this later this year. Um, but all of them are on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and anywhere ebooks or regular books are sold. Fine. Yeah, I love audiobooks. So I will definitely look for that one. I know I'm a huge audiobook person. I I, I probably li I listen to more audiobooks sometimes than I do read physical books just because I'm so busy because I work full time and everything too. Um, it's my spring break right now, so. But um, well, this works out for me then. <laughs> yeah, it's my spring break right now. But um, I love audiobooks. I listen to them when I go on long walks. I listen to them when I go on long car drives. I listen to them when I go to the grocery store. So yeah. 
Yeah, I'm the same way. I don't, I can't get it in my car without putting a book on it. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here, Mariah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Finding the Magic podcast. I'm your host, author and podcaster, Trisha Copeland, and I love getting behind the scenes. If you like the podcast, make sure to subscribe and stop in each week discover new authors and books. Thanks for listening. And until next time, keep finding the magic.